Hello everyone. Today I want to share with you the Genesis chapter 42. And this is Jacob's family. As Joseph interpreted the Pharaoh's dream, there was the famine and Jacob's family also suffered from the famine. Thus Jacob sent his 10 sons to Egypt to buy some grain, but he didn't send Benjamin with his 10 sons. Um, all his family did not imagine that they would meet Joseph there. So when Joseph saw his brothers came to buy some grain and bow down before him, he recognized them. However, he did not express it. He wanted to test his brother if they were still same. So he uh, accused them as spies. So his brothers insist their innocence and they said I have a father and then I also have a youngest brother we are not spies we just came to buy some grain so Joseph forced them to bring Benjamin to prove their innocence so Joseph said okay if you are not spy and if you have your youngest brother at home bring him and show the, him to prove your innocent but one of your siblings should stay in the Egypt. So uh, except the Simon, his nine brothers came back home and told his father what happened in Egypt and why they should bring Benjamin to Egypt. This situation caused Jacob to be sad very much. So if we read this one and imagine that you are 10 brothers and Jacob, so if you are Jacob, how would you feel? Maybe it is hard to see this situation as a positive or hope, hopeful things. And then can you think about the Joseph since he was sold as the slave until he got the power as the prime minister of the Egypt? How about Joseph's life and his heart? So here, well, uh, I illustrated the picture of the heart. It implies the empty heart. So it shows the lack of our positivity. And then this heart is a full of positivity. The, it indicated the full of the positivity. So our suffering snatches our positivity like this one, the empty heart. In this situation, we will have no energy to embrace or forgive others. We are already knocked out. So we need the positivity in our hearts to overcome our uh, suffering and to embrace and forgive others. So my question, how can we restore our positivity? So as we read uh, Joseph's life and then after we read the chapter 42, also, we know what would happen to the next chapters. We want to think about how to restore our positivity. Um, based on my reading of Joseph's life in Genesis, I think we can restore our positivity if we experience God's steadfast love, we, if, we, uh, if God heals our broken hearts, if we become well holistically, and if we see God's big picture, if we become mature spiritually, and if we find more important life goals, we can restore our positivity through God. So look at here, the God is the factor to restore our positivity. Joseph experienced God's steadfast love in his life. Right? Whenever he have a broken heart, God heals him and make him well holistically. That's why he could work at the Bodhivar's house and then in the jail. And then he was in chapter 42, when he see his brothers came and bow before him, he also see God's big picture and realize why he is in Egypt. So by my many sufferings, he become mature. His brothers also become mature, and then 
Joseph found the more important life goals to accomplish God's will. So you remember that Joseph's dream, two dreams in Genesis chapter 37, right? His brother's sheep was bowed down to his sheep and the sun and the moon and 11 stars bowed down to him. When he was a youth, he dreamed these two dreams, but all his family did not like it. And then we also could not imagine how God make it accomplish. Today in Genesis 42, we see that 10 brothers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, but Benjamin stay in uh, his house. So to get the grain in famine, Joseph's brothers came and bowed before Joseph. So this is how God accomplished Joseph's first dream. His brothers, Shivas, bowed down to his sheep. So uh, since Joseph was sold as a slave, he, was, he stayed in the Fodival's house, but because of Fodival's wife, he was in jail a very long time. And then the cupbearer also forgot him, but finally he remembered Joseph to interpret the Pharaoh's uh, dream. That's why he got out of the jail. That is how God works. And he was a slave. He came to Egypt as the slave now, but he got the, a great promotion, slave or prisoner to be the prime minister of the Egypt, right? And then he, or, he always lonely, right? Slaves and then prisoner, he was lonely. But in chapter 41, God gave him the family, his wife and then two sons, the Manasseh and Ephraim. So God testified his steadfast love toward Joseph, uh, even in the middle of the, all the sufferings. And finally, Joseph sees God's big picture. So uh, when you feel that you have no positivity in your heart, let's pray to God to restore our positivity, to go through our suffering. And finally, we see God's positive big picture embedded in our lives. In the middle of the course of our suffering, it is hard to see God's big picture. But uh, we need the positivity to go through all our suffering. We should not give it up. So that's because we see God's create, God create the positive things from bad situation. In Joseph's life, God created the positive things from bad situation, right? He was in jail. That's why he met the cupbearer. And that's why he couldn't meet the Pharaoh. Right? It's God create the positive things from bad situation. And so we have to trust that God will make all hardship as a positive things later. And then we hope in our prayer, God to work like that. So uh, if we see, we trust, and if we hope God lead us from the valley of the shadow of the death, to green pasture, we can restore our positivity and go through the, all our uh, sufferings. So like Joseph, let's see and let's trust and let's hope God creates the positive things from bad situation and God's leading to the green pasture. The so faith in forward. So when we see and trust and hope God's power to transform the old hardship to the positive things for us. And then he's leading us to the green pasture. We can restore our positivity. God bless you.